you guys. Welcome to Rosina Ranch Paint Nights with Lisa. Tonight we are going to be doing our beautiful beachscape where we're going to be doing some sand details, some shadowing, some starfish, and some drawing in the sand. This one isn't super easy. We focus a lot on doing some shadowing, so you will be using a lot of your fine tip brushes tonight. But diving right in, as you can tell, it's a little bit brighter in here because we got a new camera. But if you do have a supply kit, go ahead and tear that apart. You guys have an extra surface to lay something down to get dirty. And you're going to have your water cup and paper towel. You're also going to have your wax mixing sheet to do some blending. And we've got six colors this week. So we will be working with our primary black, primary yellow, primary blue, turquoise, white, and burnt umber brown. So I'll go ahead and set these up right now. If you guys haven't done so already, go ahead and get some water in your cups. Also, I ask that you use a blow dryer just so you can keep up with us. If you do need to have extra time and you can't finish something, go ahead and tell me by putting H in the chat feature on the right hand side, which will tell me, hey Lisa, not quite there yet, can you give me a minute to catch up? Also, if you guys can't keep up with the video, what I'm going to do is keep this up afterwards so you guys can always come back at any time you want. You guys can do it at your own pace, go back, watch the video, and then you can do it that way. So don't be rushed. This does take a little bit of time, but you can always come back and do it. All right, so let me go ahead and show you what I'm working with. Okay, you guys see my setup. I'm going to put my paints right here on the right hand side as well as you guys have a reference photo. The reference photo is down on the right. So if you guys ever try to figure out what we're working on, it's right there. And I'll be showing you guys what we're going to be using today as far as brushes go. So for supplies today, we're going to be using three different types of brushes. We're going to be using our one inch chip brush. We're also going to be using our small chisel brush, flathead. And then we've got this fine little zero tip, which is a very fine, precise tip, which we're going to be using quite often in this painting. Again, we also have here a napkin to dry off our brushes. I got my water cup right here. And if you guys end up making a mistake tonight on the sand, or you just don't kind of like the way it looks, you put down too much paint accidentally, make sure you have a few extra paper towels on hand. All right. So again, if I ask you guys a question, if you guys want to put on the chat feature Y means yes, we'll move forward. And if you guys need to hold for a minute, just tell me H and that will tell me to hold just for a little bit. But if you guys have everything ready to go, you've got your blow dryer ready to go. That's super handy. All right, we can dive in and get started. Any questions too that you guys have, put it in the chat feature. And it'll take me about 15 seconds from the live version to go ahead and answer you guys. Okay? So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and grab my chip brush. And I'm going to start on the ocean. So what I want to do is I want to dip it into that primary blue, get a good amount of paint. And we're just going to cover the top of our canvas. And we're working with an 11 by 14 canvas. So 
So what I want to do is just start at the top and slowly work my way all the way across. Just go ahead and slap that paint on. Chip brushes are tend to shed a lot, so if you guys do happen to get some of that little hair stuck in there, go ahead and just wiggle it out and brush over that. You want your streaks to be nice and long all the way from one side to the other because that water is going in one direction right now. And we are painting this uh, canvas in landscape, so that means lengthwise, side to side. Okay. Now we're gonna get, there's not too much water in this picture, so we are gonna get to the turquoise blue pretty fast here. So what I'm going to do now is without washing this chip brush, we're just going to go ahead and dip straight. Oh wait, before we do that, make sure you cover the sides of your canvas because it just looks much more professional when you get the sides of your canvas going a color all the way off the edge. And don't forget your top. Let's go ahead and get my top real quick. Don't want to see any white canvas. Okay. Now that I got that done, we can move forward to our turquoise paint. I'm going to again take that chip brush. Now I'm going to dip it into the turquoise blue. And I'm really going to get a good amount loaded. Let's show you. So I got a good fair amount on here. Now we need to do the outline of our water and you don't have to be exact like you don't have to make it look exactly like my reference photo but I'm gonna kind of use this reference photo because I kind of want the water to look like there's parts where it's coming in further so we can hide a little sand dollar somewhere in there so again don't think too much about it. I'm gonna start from the left and all I'm gonna do is just kind of outline where I want my water line to fall. And we turn that around just so you have extra paint. If the paints blend together, that's perfect. You're just helping yourself out for the next step. And I'm just going to have it kind of wiggle off. And don't worry if you know you got those lines because we are going to clean that up. Right now we're just laying down kind of a general idea of where we want our water to fall. Okay, and I'm going to load up my brush again with some more turquoise. And now what I'm going to start doing is blending these acrylic colors into, into each other. Acrylic tends to dry pretty quickly, especially in this nice California heat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start brushing back and forth all the way up to the top of the canvas just blending those two colors and you do want to see some streaks some streaks are good makes it look like actual water but make sure your streaks aren't going up and down because that's not the flow of the water and it will show later so you always want your streaks to be nice and long side to side Okay. Now if you want you can go ahead and cover those side canvases with that pretty turquoise blue. Go ahead and do that now so you don't have to worry about that later. All right. So now I have a general idea of where I want my water to fall. What I'm going to do now is clean out my chip brush really give it a good clean because you are probably going to have to change out your water a few times because we're going to be working on the sand part now. So you really want to wash out that brush. And then after you wash out that brush, make sure you use your paper towel or napkin to really make sure that brush is nice and dry. So dry out that brush pretty well. 
Now what we're doing next is we're going to lay some white down on our canvas. We're actually going to go ahead and cover the, in, the rest of the canvas in white completely. And this is going to help us when we start blending in the sand. And you'll figure out why. But right now we're just going to go ahead and dive into our sand. So go ahead take your chip brush and just load it up with a lot of white paint. Okay, I'm going to show you. Now I am going to start at the bottom of my canvas and I'm going to, to the best of my knowledge, cover the entire canvas that's left in white. You should be able to see a slight difference from the gesso that's already on your canvas and the white paint. So I got a little bit of hair in there. Gonna lift that out. Nice long strokes. And again, you want these strokes to be nice and long too because you will see the streaks in the sand, which is what we want. But we don't want to be up and down. We want them nice, long, side to side. My chip brush keeps shedding. Gonna load up some more white paint. Now as I get closer to my shoreline, I'm gonna get a little bit more careful here. And remember, acrylic tends to dry a lot quicker than, say, oil paints. So we are going to have to move fairly quick here. Just go ahead and slap that white on, but make sure you're doing nice, long streaks. And as we get closer to the shoreline, I'm going to kind of use a wiggling motion just to kind of get it a little bit closer. I don't have to necessarily touch the blue. I don't want to touch the blue yet because it's still wet. But I want to get really close to that blue. So just kind of in a sideways motion, put some paint in there because you're really going to need white paint. Because as the sand goes out and away, it's actually going to get darker, so we're going to use it really, really light up at the top coming down. So go ahead and just make sure that you've got that white paint really close, as close as you can to the blue without actually touching it. I'm going to wiggle some paint, get close to it, but not quite touching it and nice long streaks back and forth. Okay, now while this is wet, this is our prime time to be using our brown to make the sand. And if you want, you guys can do this right now. Just kind of put some white on the sides of your canvas to carry it off. Okay. So let's go and take our brush we don't wash it, but what we're going to do is we're going to dip this tip into our brown right now. Or we call it burnt umber. So I only have about half an inch dipped in right now. And what I want to do is I kind of want to focus on the side and real quickly I just want to start streaking it. See how dark that is? Nice long streaks back and forth. Start working it all the way up. And don't stop. You definitely want those streaks in there. You just want to keep going up. Keep going up. As it goes up, it's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. And that's exactly what we want. So I got a little bit of that blue in there. No worries. I'm just going to kind of quickly rinse off my brush. I don't want to. I don't want blue on there. And I got a lot of paint down here, so I'm going to blend this in back and forth. The bottom's always going to be a little bit darker, so that's perfect. You want those nice long streaks because it gives variation to the sand. All the sand's not the same color. It's just going to help us out later. And if it looks super streaky, it, that's fine. That's exactly what you want. You want those streaks in there. But make sure you're covering all that white canvas. You do not want to really see white canvas. Make sure you're getting your sides at the same time. Just go ahead and carry that color to the side. 
And as we want to get back into here, again, we're going to just load up. Actually, without loading up first, I just kind of want to wiggle with what's left on my brush because I really want it to be a super light sand. I just want to wiggle up to that top. Side to side wiggle. Just get some sand color in there. Remember, you don't have you don't want to touch that blue because then you're going to drag blue into your sand, but if you do, just clean off your brush. Yep, see, for me, I've got the fan running and it's actually almost dry. So, it does dry fairly quickly, but that's pretty typical of acrylic. Okay, let me make sure I got my sides again. Okay. So from here, what we're going to need to do is we have to make sure that our canvas is completely dry right now. And so we need to pull out our handy dandy blow dryer. Now, if, you, if you're able to have a blow dryer, please do not keep it on high heat. We want to keep this bad boy at the coolest temperature possible and on the low, low setting. So don't let it get too hot. If you have too thick of paint, it will start cracking it. So let's give this about a minute, two minutes, till it's completely dry to the touch before we move on. dry to the touch. I got a little bit of thick white right there, but that's fine. Everything else seems to be dry. I'll give you a, a moment. Hopefully you are blow drying your canvas right now. But what we're going to work on next is just some of the white, the white foam coming in, touching the sand, as well as a little bit of white streaks just so we give more definition to the water. Make sure it looks like it's flowing back there. All right, if you're ready to move on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our chisel brush, which is this little guy, and go ahead and just dip him straight into our white. I loaded him up with white and what I want to do now is I just want to trace where that edge meets my sand. I want to cover about an inch or actually here just follow along with me trace out your water 
Make sure you've got enough paint on there. Just where the water touches the sand, you just want to go over it. Push all the way down on your chisel brush so you're getting the full flat chisel brush on there. Make sure you carry that off to the side. Load up more paint. Okay. Now I'm just going to trace again this outline. I want to stay as close as I can to the sand. And again, make sure you get that side. You might want to go over that, make sure you're covering up that blue. Yep, now you're starting to, that blue is disappearing and you're starting to touch that sand now. All right. Now what we do from here is we're going to take our chisel brush and we're going to load it up with white paint again. But this time, we're going to kind of do just paint flicks, like little X's, all across where we just, we we're actually going to go over what we just did, but we're going to kind of blend it in. So if you can see, I'm just kind of making little dashes back and forth, really small, like almost like mini X's. And I just want to go over, kind of making it look like water foam, just as it's barely, barely touching the sand. So I just want to go over, kind of blend it into the water by making little X's. And your streaks don't have to look exactly like mine. Every painting is completely unique. You can do bigger X's, fatter X's smaller X's. You can really, really blend that in. See, I, my, I don't have too much paint on my paint tip, so it's really kind of almost dry brushing into the water right there. And you don't want it to be a straight line. You want to see that it's got some definition, so it looks all the lines are kind of sticking out and blending into the water right there. Okay, from here I'm going to just take my chisel brush and I'm going to dip just the, just the tip in the white. And with that, just the tip dipped in the white, I want to very lightly make long strokes across my water and focus more as, the wa as it gets closer to the sand. There's going to be a little bit more streaking than as it gets out further. So maybe I'll just start here and just lightly streaking very lightly, light streaks all throughout the water. Again, it could be like dry brushing. You don't want to add too much paint. But as we get really close to that water, we're going to add more streaks as it gets closer to that water. And just a few up at the top with that dry brush. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with that. You don't want to overdo it. And then while you still have a little bit of paint on there, but it's dry, you can kind of just go ahead if you want to add a little bit more foam on the top of your foam. Just add a little bit of white. Just wiggle that around. Just kind of adds like spray, like a spray of water. There you go. And for me, I'm seeing a little bit too much blue where it's touching the sand, so I'm going to add a little bit more white. And I want to go and just add a little bit more white to where it's touching the sand. I don't want to see blue. So I'm just going to go dab in. Dab in some more white. Just like that. All right, and from here, let's go ahead and wash out, because we do need to wash out our brushes. 
So you can wash out that chisel brush, but you are going to need to go and clean out your water. We don't want any of that blue. So I'm going to give myself 30 seconds and I'm going to go and get some clean, fresh water. All right, I'm back. Got some fresh, clean water. Hopefully you did too. And now <clears throat> we need to go ahead and clean out your chisel brush, not your chisel brush, your chip brush, if you have not already done so. This, <clears throat> we are going to do a little bit of paint flicking, so you need to make sure that your chip brush is extremely dry because when you start to flick paint like we're going to do for the bottom sand if your brush has any water on it and you start to do your paint flicking you're going to end up with huge gobs and it's going to really get all over your canvas super fast so you do want this to be really dry so make sure you really dry off your chip brush now what I'm going to do with my chip brush I'm going to dip it, let's go with white first, but I'm only going to get the tips. I don't want to get anything more than the tips. If you guys could hear my cat, she's like, what are you doing? So I've got just a little bit, I'm going to rub it in with my fingers just to make sure there's not too much on one little brush or bristle. So I've got a little bit of paint on here. Now what I'm going to do is I don't want to aim it towards the water. I kind of want to aim it away from the water and just lightly take my finger and flick some white specks. Into my sand. Let's find a good technique. And these are really tiny white specks. I don't even think you guys can really see them, so I'm going to get a little bit more white paint. Because even though I want them to be tiny, I don't want them to be that tiny. So let's go ahead. And I'm going to flick some paint all over the sand. I am sorry if you're getting this on your computers or wherever you're doing this. It is kind of messy. All right, I do have some white speckles in there. So what I want to do now is I want to take that chip brush and again load it up, but this time with that burnt umber brown, just the tips. Okay, and now I'm going to flick this paint all over and be really careful not to get it. So start down here at the bottom and slowly work your way up. You don't want to get it into the water because then you'll be touching that up later. So just light, light flicks. That's a good technique right there. just light little speckles. What some people do like to do too is just get enough paint to where they could tap it on their finger. And sometimes that's a good technique, but this is kind of a big brush to do that with. So I'll just flick. And I'm going to actually try and just take my chisel brush and dip that in the burnt umber very so slightly. 
I'm going to see what that looks like if I tap it. Just got to be really careful not to get it in the water. We're just adding some speckles so it looks like real sand. A little detail goes a long way. And if that's the specks aren't big enough, like I said, they will get bigger if you add a little bit of water to them. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brown. I'm going to dip some water into that burnt umber I'm showing you on my palm. But what I'm going to do now, since it's really liquidy, see now when I flick, they are giving me a lot bigger specks. Which is kind of what I want. So if you do dip into your water, you will get bigger specks. Just be careful not to get it into the ocean water. And you can do this with the white too. Just keep specking. Put those spots on until you are happy with your sand. And if you get too big of a uh, splatter, what you can do is just take your napkin and quickly while it's still wet dab that up if you don't want too big of a speck for me I'm just kind of dabbing but I'm also picking up a little bit here and there and I'm kind of carrying them over like stamping them in other places okay now this is really thin, there wasn't much paint to splatter, so it should be pretty dry. But again, we are going to be working with white next, so let's go ahead and make sure it's super dry. Alright. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our zero brush, which is this tiny little guy right here, and we're going to do some shadowing. Now, for shadowing, what I want you to do first is just dip a little bit of this into your water, and we're going to dip it in black, so it's slightly watered down, and very lightly, I want to start with a very light hand, just tracing the outline of where my sand hits that water very very lightly. It's almost like you don't want to when you do this you don't want to lift up. See I got that's getting a little the paints fading away right here. What I need to do is I need to add a little bit more water and dip it in the black again because I want it to be very fluid and I want to keep it going so I just want to trace very lightly without trying to go as far as I can without having to lift it. I just want to go and trace out where the sand touches the water. You keep doing this until you have the whole sand traced out. So dip it in water, dip it in black paint, and lightly with your hand just glide it across where it's touching. Doesn't look pretty now, but later we'll go in, we'll fade it, it'll look a lot more natural. So again, long strokes, very gentle. It's getting where it looks like it's not fluid and you see the canvas underneath it that do, you do need to add more water. I want this to be really fluid. And again, I'm having it go off that canvas right there. All right. So hopefully you have that part down. My sand is really dry so I'm gonna start moving on wash that little zero brush 
and go ahead and get out your chisel brush again. Sometimes I like to pinch the tip of it just so that all the bristles go back together. And I'm going to dip my chisel brush in white. This is a time consuming one. I'm sorry guys. And I'm going to do two different kind of starfish. Maybe like in my reference photo I got two over here. I have a little sand dollar going into the water and then I kind of instead of signing it I did my initials in the sand. So let's start off with the starfish. Um, basically we're going to do a really skinny star to begin with. So I'm just going to lay my brush down on its edge and I'm just going to make I guess you could say an X. We're going to do an X first and then we're going to give that X a little top to make my skinny little starfish. Can you guys see that? I got a skinny starfish going. And while I've got that down, I'm just going to come over here. And you can have your starfish go off the canvas over here. That would look even cooler. Or you could just have it sit over here like I did. But I'm going to do another one. Let's do an X going this way. It's going to be a little bit smaller of a starfish. And give it that top right here. Now, since I did these skinny starfishes, that's a reference for where I'm going to put them. And they do need that white background so that they're a little bit brighter than the sand. So what I need you to do is right now you're just going to go and now you're going to thicken up those starfish. So just dr dr drag the paint from the tip all the way to the middle and now you're going to be thickening up that star. So just go from the tip down to the middle and kind of thicken it up as you go down just like you would with a regular star. We're going to go over this starfish with a little bit lighter of a white yellow and that's just going to make it kind of pop off that sand. And then we'll do some shadowing underneath it so that they know it's there. Otherwise it does kind of blend in and get lost. Okay, from the bottom, just going to bring that in, thicken it up. Okay, I got my first layer down. I'm going to move on to this guy. This is going to be a different type of starfish. So we're going to do the same thing where we thicken it up and then we're going to kind of connect the bottom pieces together. So just from the tip down, thicken it up. And if you're getting frustrated, you think it's you want to take your time on this, you can always pause, come back to the video later, take a breath, relax, because it's not supposed to be stressful. You're supposed to have a good time. And you know, stars aren't always the easiest shapes, especially, well, stars and circles. People think circles are so easy, but you know, it takes a lot of practice. And that's exactly what we're doing is painting is just practicing. The more you practice, the better you're going to get, the better your technique's going to get. So don't beat yourself up. So at, again, as I go a little closer to the middle, I'm going to connect them more. I'm going to round this part. I'm going to round them off. It's my fat starfish. I have them going off the edge a little bit. All right, and now I want to focus on somewhere in here having a sand dollar kind of sticking out. Make sure my black line is dry. It's totally dry. So I'm just going to choose here to put my brush down and I'm just going to go and I'm going to make a half circle, but it's not going to be perfect. I want like some abnormalities to it. Like kind of give a wiggle to your brush as you're doing a half circle. As you can see, my sand dollar is not perfect by any means. 
It has gotten tossed in the ocean, but it's still intact. Because how hard is it when you go to a beach and you're looking for that perfect sand dollar and you think you found it and then you lift it up and you realize part of it's missing. Can't tell you how hard it is for me to find a whole sand dollar. And my daughter thinks if she finds a whole sand dollar and she gives it to mommy, mommy gives her a dollar for each sand dollar, which I totally would if she could find a whole one. But I'm not that lucky. All right, and just go ahead and fill that in with the white. Make sure you don't see that black anymore. We'll come back in and we'll do some shading, but right now we're just laying down that white. Okay, and I got some thick paint. I'm just gonna smooth out because it's gonna take forever to dry if I have my paint that thick. So I'm just gonna kinda smooth out any paint that's too thick on my canvas. So I'm going to need to dry that. But while we're waiting for those to dry, let's go ahead and do your signature. Now, instead of signing it like I usually do LL, I wanted to do something in the sand. So whatever your initials are, go ahead and do your initials. So you're going to take your chisel brush, wash that out. Go ahead and dry it off and straighten out those bristles so they're nice and tight. And we're going to dip this in your burnt umber brown, just slightly, a little bit. And if you want to make it even a little bit darker, you can dip that little tip slightly in the black, just barely. So it's got a little bit of black in it, just to make it darker. Now do your own initial. You don't don't do LL unless your name begins with L. But I'm going to do LL right here. I'm not going to do it straight up and down. I'm going to kind of do it at an angle so that I can put a little heart around it too. So I'm just going to do L, L. And if your heart's going to go off, that would look really cool too. Don't be a perfectionist. It's just writing in the sand. So I can see that black, I can see that brown in there, it's nice and dark. And then very lightly, I'm just going to touch down in the middle and I'm going to kind of draw a little heart. And your heart can go off the canvas. I'm going to come back down over here. Get a little bit more paint. And I'm going to continue that heart. Kind of go over it. You want it to be a little bit thick because then we're going to play with it. We're going to make it look more realistic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lightly dip it in that water. And now I've got a little bit of brown paint watered down on the tip. And what I want to do is I just want to go over while it's still wet and kind of wiggle up and down just slightly. So if I wiggle, it looks more like I dipped my finger in the sand and kind of moved it around. Let's just kind of wiggle it. You can do little circles. You can go up and down, zigzag. Whatever makes it look like you were just playing in the sand. You don't want it to look too perfect. So maybe you could do a little circle, zigzag, up and down. Rub it in. You kind of want to still see that line, so you just want enough water on your brush to just kind of push that paint around. Okay. And the same thing goes for my LLs. You might want to dry that off a little bit and just kind of rub over it just so it doesn't look so perfect. Almost blurry. I'm just going little circle motions over it just so I can kind of fade it into that sand while well, hopefully it's still wet. Just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle while it's still wet. You're getting a little bit onto the sand. 
Now what I want to do is I want to take my chisel brush and I want to dip it slightly in white and just a little dab of the burnt umber brown. And let me use a paint top to show you. You're going to take that white and that tiny bit of brown and you just want to make a very nice light brown. Almost cream. And you're going to load up the tip of your chisel very lightly and you're going to try and stay away from the middle because the light's going to pick up on the sand on the outside. So just kind of take the bristles and just very lightly touch on the outside of your heart. So it looks like the light is just picking up that little bit from the sand. Just lightly. It's going to get crazy. You just dab dab all around. Don't be a perfectionist. Just dab a little bit of on, on the letters, dab on the outsides a little. Make it look more realistic and imperfect, like you wrote it with your fingertips. All right. So from here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get a nice color going for our starfish. So what I want you to do is, this is when we're going to take uh, some of that yellow. And there's just a little bit of yellow because we don't need too much. Uh, let's take that yellow and we're going to mix a good amount of white. So put a good amount of white into that yellow and we're going to get a very pale yellow. I want it even more paler than that. So. I want to add more white. I want it to be white with just the slight tinge of yellow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just this little drop of that brown. So it kind of looks like sand color, but it's a very, very pale yellow. And this is the perfect color for our starfish. So now that we got the base down, why we did the base is so that it actually can bring up another color to the top. If we didn't, it would just kind of blend and we would lose that starfish. So right now I'm just tracing over that starfish with my pale yellow with a tinge of burnt umber in there. I'm not being too perfect. So I'm going to go over the edges, clean them up. So just go over all that white that you see with that pale yellow. You can do the same to the other. So you want to make sure you cover all of him don't want to see any white. But if you go outside of the lines, don't worry because we'll clean it up. Same thing with this starfish. I'm going to just go over him with this pale yellow. You know, the, the painting's kind of at its ugly stage. It doesn't really pop until you start adding in all the shadows. And just those little shadows add so much detail. It completely transforms your picture. There's so many people that are out there and they do really beautiful painting. And it's like, it would be so much better if they would go in and just add the slightest shadows and highlights. What a difference that makes. It can make a great painting into a 
spectacular wow painting. Just if you learn to do shadows and highlights. The two most important things you could ever learn. Shadows and highlights. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wash that chisel brush off. And I do kinda wanna put a little bit of color into that sand dollar. So I'm gonna dry that chisel brush and I'm going to dip it in white and very so slightly dip it in, actually, let's keep it really bright white. So I'm just going to fill this in again. And while I do this and I have white on my chisel brush, I'm going to go back over and trace where the water meets the sand. And this time I'm going to kind of take away some of that dark line. Now we're going to work on the shadows. So you just, some areas you want to completely kind of just cover that black line. You want to thin it out. This is the time to do it. You just want to thin out that shadow. And if you get like a streak in the water, again, just go over it and do those little X's. You don't want to see a hard line there because you just want it to blend back into the water. But that's to kind of help break up that shadow right there. All right. And actually we don't need to wash this. What I would do right now is dip your chisel brush into that burnt umber, just the tip. Dip just the tip. Make sure you don't have too much brush, I mean paint on your brush. Just kind of rub it off. You just want a very, very light burnt umber on there. And on the edges of the starfish, I'm just going to kind of give it a little bit of shadow on the inside, the inside right now. So I'm just going to take that edge and I'm just going to do a small little line on the outside, the inside but the outside, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I'm just going to do on the inside of my starfish a little brown just to make it pop so it doesn't blend in too well with the sand. Just add a little bit of brown. If it's wet, perfect, because it actually will blend in better. If it's dry, that's okay too. Mine's just about dry. Now when it comes to over here, there's a little bit more brown, so I'm going to add a little bit more brown on my brush. Just a tiny bit. And I'm just going to kind of dab that brown into the middle, working my way out. So just dab that brown into the middle, work your way out. The starfish is a little bit darker on the inside and it gets lighter as it goes out. All right pretty happy with that. So now we're going to go in and this is when all the little details, this is the part that can become time consuming if you let it. And you could go back and keep adding more details. You don't have to stop until you like your picture, but sometimes I always say when you think you might be done, take a step back, take a breath and look at it because from five feet away it's going to look completely, than it, uh, completely different than it does when you're this close to it. So add some details, take a step back, take a look at it, see if you like it, and then move forward. Okay, so I'm gonna take our zero fine brush and let's go ahead and dip that into our water. So it's watered down. Then we're gonna dip it ever so slightly in our black. And I'm gonna dip it back into my water because I want it to be really, really thinned out. Now the parts that are darker where it's touching the sand, I kind of want to drag out a shadow with this thinned out line of water, water down black. So you just kind of want to add, it's almost like a transparent. I think for me, that's a little bit too much paint, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my napkin 
and just roll it and pick up a little bit of that paint and go back over it, Water, put more water on my brush and kind of blend that in underneath that dark shadow. You want it to almost be gray, like it's transparent. Okay, I'm going to dip it in the water again, a little bit of black, dip it back in my water. So it's almost like you're painting with watercolor now. And maybe over here I'm going to add another little dark shadow. Just drag that along. You can make it a little bit thicker, thinner. Now when I get to the sand dollar, I really have really watered down paint and I just want to continue that line to break it up and to show that it really is in the water so I'm doing a very thin line connecting back down and I still have a little bit of paint on there so I'm going to make another shadow if it's too dark dip it in the water make it more like water paint you want it to be transparent want to pick up on that. Now since I have a little bit of paint on here, I'm just going to lightly trace out my sand dollar. And I've got such little paint on there it just disappears almost. But you can kind of still see it. So what I want to do is in the water I want to continue and just pretend like I can actually see that sand dollar somewhat in the water. So I want to see that little silhouette of the sand dollar in the water. And we're going to dip it in the black, really, really, really water it down to where it's like watercolor. There's almost nothing but water and a tiny bit of black on my paintbrush. And I'm going to do those little imperfections that you see on your sand dollar. So those little holes, they almost look like tiny surfboards. I'm just going to draw in like a little surfboard here, do a little surfboard there, do like a little hole right here, and a hole right here. Even in the water you might see like a little hole through the sand dollar. And on the inside of this area I'm going to go ahead and fill it in with the sand color underneath. So I'm going to put a little bit of brown on here and really water that down and I'm just going to fill in right here. Oop, too much water. Just add a little bit of brown in there. This is going to be the hardest part because you are dealing with a really, really fine tip. So I'm going to dip it in the brown again, super water it down, and now I'm going to do kind of like a star in the middle. So I'm going to do like a teardrop, but I'm going to do it in the star shape. So I'm going to do another teardrop, so there's going to be five little teardrops. It's kind of like a star, but made with teardrops. And it's very, very transparent. And then I'm going to put it in the water. If you want, you can put a little bit of brown in there. Give it a little imperfection. Add some brown in there. So it doesn't look too perfect. Add some color. I'm going to rub that in. For me it's a little bit too much color so I'm going to dip some white. And I'm going to blend this in. A little too much color for me. Right. 
Now, while you have the white, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of accents. I like to just add little drops on top of my starfish so that it stands out from the sand a little bit more. Just go ahead and give it like little, little tiny drops of white on your starfish. So we go over here. Oop, that was a big drop, but that's okay. I like it. Just add some detail into your starfish. Make it stand out from that sand. And again, we're going to add, let's say, five little circles in the middle of this starfish. So just figure, start one for each little arm. Just plop it down, rotate your hand, kind of make an imperfect circle. All right, I got five, five little circles. And I can even take that little white and kind of do a little streak going out into the starfish's arm, just adding a little bit of highlights. And now we're going to do some shadowing underneath. So one thing to think about whenever you're doing your painting is where is your light source coming from? And for me, I'm thinking my light source is just maybe to the right of my painting, but almost directly over it. So we're getting shadows being picked up on almost all the corners, but a little bit heavier as the light's coming down here. So our shadows are going to be a little bit heavier on the left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that fine zero tip, and again, I'm going to super water it down, dip it in the black very, very lightly, dip it back in the water so it's watered down, and I just want to start, it's a little too watery, hold on, with one of the legs. So I'm going to add a little shadow just on one side of the leg, because again, my light source is coming down this way. So this side not necessarily isn't going to have a shadow, but the left side will definitely have a shadow. And then we're going to carry it over, kind of carry it around just the tip, and then maybe drag it out so it's a little bit thicker, showing that there's a shadow there. Drag that out. It's almost transparent though. It's really thinned out. Again, thin out your, put, dip it in water, dip it in black, dip it in water again. And then add some more shadows. I'm going to start with this arm and just drag that watered out down black all the way to the tip. And maybe drag it out that way showing that my light is coming down in this direction. Okay. I can show that by doing a little bit of a shadow here. This is also a chance to clean up your starfish and its edges. Add a little tiny shadow here, just so that it pops more. Okay. Do the same thing for the other starfish. So dip in water, dip in black, dip in water again, so it's super watered down. And go ahead and give yourself a nice shadow. Trace the bottom. Drag it out a little bit. Make this bottom one a little bit thicker. Shadows are getting casted a little bit thicker at the bottom. Okay, do this side. I'm already dry, so I gotta get more paint. Water it down. Drag that shadow.
super watered down. Just kind of outlining some of the edges just so that it pops more. All right. Now let's move back up to our start our sand dollar. Same technique. Water it down, dip it in the black, water it down, and focus on the sun coming down. So we're going to have a little bit of heavier shadows on the left. So I'm going to drag that shadow down a little bit more. Add some water, smudge it around. There we go. Adding water really helps to bring out that shadow. And you can even go a little darker if you want to get fancy and make a little bit of dark shadow on the left hand side. Of these little holes. Just so that it pops a little bit more. And because there's too much of a line for me, I'm going to take my chisel brush, dry it off, wash it off, dry it off, put a little bit of white paint on there, just on the tip. Make sure there's just a little bit of paint. So I'm going to take off some excess paint on my finger, just so it's on the very tip. And I'm going to lightly go over this sand dollar line, because I want it to look like it really is truly in the water. I'm going to even go a little bit into that line where it touches the sand and the sand dollar right here. Just so it breaks it up so I'm not seeing this perfect line. I want to break that up. And again while you have white paint you could go into certain areas and just kind of break up that line where it touches the sand just by lightly putting some paint down. So it breaks it up so it doesn't look too perfect. And it's kind of like mist or tiny little specks of water being flicked up into the air. Break it up. You can even do that up here if you want to add a few specks. Just break it up. Maybe this water is hitting really, really hard. Break that. All right. And of course, this is the part where I tell you guys take a step back, take a look. There might be something you want to add, something you want to make pop more. If you want to add more water to the line where the water meets the sand, go for it. But this is when you kind of want to step back and just make any adjustments necessary. So instead of signing your piece of work, you can go ahead and you guys are just writing it in the sand just like that. It becomes part of your art and you don't even have to sign it anymore. But man, this really makes me want to go to the beach. And in fact, I think I'm going to go to the beach tomorrow because I just love the beach so much. And I really miss going because of all this quarantine going on. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know this was a little bit of a harder one. There was a lot of details. You guys had to use a lot of the fine tip paints but you know the more you practice the better you're gonna get and don't beat yourself up I think this is a really awesome painting fairly easy but the shadows can be a little bit tricky and it's just practice is gonna make perfect so hopefully you guys enjoyed this had a good time let's go ahead and see so I have I always do this the original and then I've got what we did tonight Ooh, I got a little bit bigger on my signature there but as you can see they're always gonna look a little bit different these ones are a little bit more yellow you know I've got definitely my bigger signature over here but all in all I'm happy with my painting painting makes me happy hopefully it makes you happy hopefully you guys had a great time Next week is going to be a little bit different because Tuesday nights we usually do easy beginner class and Thursday nights is regular paint class. 
but because I'm going to be out with family, I'm going to actually pre-record a rocket painting, which is going to be really cool for you kids, and that's going to be live tonight, or not live, but I'm going to pre-record that tonight so that you guys can see that anytime throughout the week. And then Thursday night class is going to be the same as usual, 7 p.m., uh, but if there's any other uh, classes you guys want to look at on YouTube, you guys can also go ahead and sign up for my email blast. All you have to do is email Rosina or rrpaintnights at gmail.com. And then if you guys go to my About Me page in the YouTube, you'll find a Facebook page. And if you guys can, go ahead and post up some of your paintings because I like everybody else to see what's going on, what other people are doing, how you guys are interpreting any of these classes. If you've got pointers or you guys want to ask me a question, you could do that So on the chat or you could do that on the Facebook page. It's up to you guys. But I hope you guys had a great time. I had a great time. And I will see you guys next week after I go to the beach. Alright, take care guys.